Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.0. In this video, I'm going to start a series of videos on how to create a version of a dungeon crawler within Twine. Sort of how to move through a dungeon, creating encounters, and creating a, a map based system that allows us to track where we are and to move between different cells. So let's look at the story I've created here. So to help us create a dungeon crawler, we need to select, like creating other games, what mechanics we want in the game. Usually, a dungeon crawler has something like the three central mechanics I have here on the screen. There's some type of health system, we're tracking something long term. We have some type of maze like map, we're usually moving between different areas. And we have some type of encounter system, we're attacking enemies or we're running into people, there's some type of encounter system going on. The encounters though, I'm going to cover in part two of this video series. Part one is just going to cover the health system and creating a maze like map. So like I said, looking at a dungeon crawler we have a three different mechanics. We want to track some sort of health, something over time, we want a map of some kind, we want to know where we are in relation to other areas we could explore, and we want to have some type of encounter system, whatever that may be. So let's start with a health system. So since we want our health to be something that appears every step we take, Sort of, it's a constant reminder before a user makes a choice. They want to know what the health is. So, because of that, we need it to be a separate passage. That way, we can easily include it using the display macro. So, notice too, I'm actually using Sugarcube in this and not the default Harlow story format. That's why the display macro uses the less than and greater than syntax style. So, I'm including the health macro to include a passage I've called health with well, just this content right here. We have a horizontal line going across, we have the word health, and then we have the value of a variable health displayed after it. And then of course another horizontal line. That allows us to include this section and any other passages we may want it just using display and then in quotations the name of the passage we want and in this case health. So like in the above code, we can use different passages, as I'll show several times in this video, as modules or functions in a way, if you want to think about them in that context, that we can divide up functionality within Twine into different passages and then include it using the display macro. So we've already got our health system right now going on. We don't have any encounters, obviously so the health won't decrease or increase in any way and right now we just want to display it so that's what we have so let's move on to the map so for our map we can use a two-dimensional array so within JavaScript and other languages a two-dimensional array is an array that for each entry is also an array so it's an array holding an array or holding multiple arrays so for our map, we also want to start at 0, 0 in the upper left-hand corner and expand outward in positive x and positive y directions. And the reason for this is just so it's easier to track in our mind. Similar how other graphics programs on computers map the upper left-hand corner in 0, 0 and the lower right-hand corner as the greatest n, n. We just want to be able to track in our minds if we're moving east, we're going in a positive x direction, if we're going south, we're moving in a positive y direction. So like I have here, we think of terms in x and y like a grid. So we want to start in one place. We also want to look at the cells around us in our map. Looking north, east, south, and west, moving in a clockwise direction there. We want to know, can we move anywhere else from where we're at? So for example, if we're starting at 2, 2, we want to know if we can move north, which is 2, 1, or east, which is 3, 2, or south, 2, 3, or west, 1, 2. And remember, of course, our grid starts at 0, 0 in the upper left, and the greatest numbers at the bottom right-hand corner. So using a two-dimensional array, we can do that by addressing any one position through a set of brackets. Now, notice I actually use y, x. The reason for that is to make the code, which I'll show once we go through it here, easier to read. You can use x, y, and in fact, I recommend you do that just for your own sanity of tracking things. But just for this example, to make the map easier to read when we look at the code, I've made it x, y. So to make it even easier on ourselves, in our two-dimensional array, we want to have zeros and ones. Pretty simple. Just 
either you can move there or you can't move there. So if it's a valid move, it'll be a 1. If it's not, it'll be a 0. So in addition to our map, then, we also want two more variables. We want position x and we want position y. These will track, naturally, their namesake. So position x will track where we are x axis. Position y will track where we are on the y axis. Again, moving from the upper left-hand corner, 0, 0, to the greatest on the bottom right-hand corner. So let's look at our testing our map here. So using the method outlined in the last passage, we can look at any one position using a variable map array and position x and position y. Now remember, of course, in this example, I've inverted them to make the code easier to read. But if you were creating this, you would look at this through position x and position y. So if we wanted to look at all four directions, all we would have to do is subtract or add one for any neighboring cell. So north, of course, is subtracting one in the y direction. East is adding one in the x direction. South is adding one in the y direction. West is adding one in the x position. Actually subtracting one in the x position. That's, that code's actually wrong there. So note that we cannot ever access a negative index position. This is the way indexes are created in many programming languages where they cannot have a negative indexed. So we always need to make sure our map has an edge along all sides, all four sides of zeros. And so invalid moves, so you can't leave the map. Which also makes logical narrative sense. You can never leave whatever place you're at. You can't leave Earth, for example, or leave the room the story is set in if there aren't any outside rooms. So that tracks pretty well. So using our example here of the map array variable and our different positions, we can look at any one position using, of course, setting position X and setting position Y and using those as indexing values to our map array. So for example, if we wanted to know what was at 1, 1, oh, well the value of 1, 1 is 1. So now that we've gotten this this far, let me take a second and go look at the code to show you what I'm talking about. So the map array variable looks like this. So each entry in the array Note that here's the first entry, here's the second one, and of course, delineated by commas, gives us our whole map here. So also notice, as I mentioned, we have edges of zeros along each side. So starting at 1, 1 puts us here. We can move east, we can move east, we can move south, we can move south, etc., until we end up at 2, which we're currently not testing for. But each step of the way, we're checking can I go up? Can I go right? Can I go down? Can I go left? Subtracting or adding one each time to check the neighboring cell. And of course, as I mentioned, at least in this example, this is set up in a YX positioning system, just so it's easier to read. So I can look at it and go, oh, I see. I can move along the ones, da 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 da, move all the way to the two eventually. So, okay, let's go back for a second. So the value of 1, 1, 1, 1 is 1. Oh, so that checks out. Okay. So, like I mentioned, we can use the code above in a series conditional. These are if statements using the if macro to move between four different passages whose content changes the x or the y position and displays information to the player. So think about it in terms of modules. I have a single map system that acts as a module that controls all the map code. And then each direction only does a simple thing. It either adds or subtracts one to its corresponding position, position X, position Y, and then it displays, it includes the map system passage. West does that, north does this, and each time within the map system, checking the position, remember in this example it's the y x position, if it equals 1. If it does, it's a valid move. So we go ahead and display a link to that passage. With every step, we're also displaying the current health and the current position. So let's look at health for a moment. And as I mentioned before, it's a horizontal line 
the word health, and then we're printing the value of the variable health. Then in the Mac, in the passage location, we have the word location and the X and the Y displaying the value of the variable position X and the value of the variable position Y. And map system is sort of a central location for all of that. It is displaying the content of health, it's displaying the content of location, and it's making four decisions here. If we can if it is a possible move to go north, include a link to that passage. If it is a possible move to go east, display a link to that passage, south and west. Each time checking if the yx in this example equals 1. And so that's what we see right here. All of this is inclusion of map system. We see the inclusion of the health passage the inclusion of the location passage, and because east is our only valid move, as we saw when we looked at the example, starting at 1-1, one, one, east is the only way, only way we can go, so let's click on east. And then we see the content of the east passage, which is actually the content of the map system passage, which is actually the content of the health passage and the location passage. And we see now that we've moved east 1, we're actually at 2, 1. So we move east again, now we're at 3, 1, and we can go south. So going luck at our map, we moved, and now we're moving 1 south. Move south again, check our map, well, yeah, we can do that. So now we want to go east. We can go east again, and east again, and east, until we're all the way over here. Now see, as you, as you can see here, using three variables, one as an array of arrays, another as a position X, and a third as a position Y, we can navigate a map that is a layout of a maze, just tracking our X and Y positions and looking at, within our map, whether or not any one direction, north, east, south, or west, is a valid move, and if it is, supplying a link to that passage, allowing the user to constantly move around and have the links be generated each time if it's a valid move, as shown as part of map system. And so there we have actually a pretty quick overview of two of the central mechanics of a dungeon crawler. We have some type of health system. Again, we don't have encounters yet, so that the health's not doing much. But we have some type of health system, and we have a map system. And we can move in four different directions. North, east, south, and west. And within each of those directions, we can see our health, and we can see our current location. And we can see where we can move from there. So that gives us a pretty solid starting point of moving into, in part two, building an encounter system, so something will happen to our health over time, and building an exit somewhere, so we always need to track at the end whether or not it's a valid exit, and if it is, whether or not we've come upon a valid exit, and if we have, to allow our user to escape the dungeon, or move on to the next level even. We could always add more levels to our dungeon if we want, by just including more arrays of arrays, more two-dimensional arrays. Thanks for watching.